Hippo. Padre. Last week, we mm -hmm. started this whole your own podcast studio thing, but it wasn't like the segments that we've done in the past where we showed people the cameras we like, the lights we like, and the, right. the microphones we like. We had a specific focus. Yes, and that focus were the little black magic cameras. Yeah, these little uh, doohickums. We love these things. Great quality. They look good. They're incredibly flexible. They're not nearly as high priced as they should be. I mean, a camera like this would normally go for somewhere between $2,000 to $3,000 just a year or two ago. Right. These were $1,000 or $1,300, and they allowed us to use interchangeable lenses. They had HDMI, SDI, all the control channels we wanted. I mean, they were right. high-end cameras. Yeah, yeah, and not not a whole lot of compromise either because like, they don't take up a lot of space. The only thing is they don't come with... Uh, the 4K model doesn't record to... Right it but that's fine i mean if, if what you're doing you don't need that and then this one does you can record to it with an sd card but no neither screen. of them have <laughs> monitors on right. it so you kind of these are cameras for people who can dial it in and know what they want these aren't like i would say beginner cameras like someone's Dude. just like oh this is a camera that people say shoots good stuff i don't know how any of it works but precisely yeah. if if you're going to be using these cameras you actually have to know how video works you have yeah. to know what kind of frame rate you want you have to know what kind of glass you want to choose because the thing about it, a camera with an interchangeable lens is it has an interchangeable lens. So yeah. you have to choose the right lens. And a lot of lenses out there, the low price ones, are kind of <laughs> junk. They're, they're plastic lenses. They're not right. great, which kind of negates the quality you get from the body. Right. And unfortunately, you didn't get the 10,000 lens? No, I could, lens from I, Leo? I could not convince Leo to let us <laughs> borrow that. Um, <laughs> he trusts us. <laughs> I, I, you know what? He trusts us, but I'm not, that not much all that surprised that yeah. he wouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, I mean, but they are still good. They are still good lenses. Mm -hmm. They don't let in nearly as much light as they should. But I mean, for our purposes and what we want to do for the segment, they work just fine. Because cool. remember, what we want to do is give people an easy sub three thousand dollars setup. Yeah, and that's what we're going to do. Now cool. uh, that sub three thousand dollars setup would include you getting up to two of these cameras. Because remember, it's $1,000 for the cinema, right. it's $1,300 for the studio, uh, and then some sort of streaming device. We're going to show you the streaming device right. in just a bit. Believe it or not, you're not going to need your laptop. This is a little box that I've been playing with for a while, and i got to say, aside from a couple of bugs, mm -hmm. it's awesome. But we do want to start with something that is a complement to this, because as okay. you mentioned... One of the biggest drawbacks of getting either of the micros from Blackmagic is... No screen. No screen. And you do need a screen. I'm not just talking so you can frame the shot. You need to be able to set parameters on the camera. You have to set your ISO. You have to set the iris. You have to set you know, what kind of color balance you want. Now, if you get a switcher that allows you to control it through one of the control channels, either through the SDI or through the HDMI, mm -hmm. then you can set it at the console. But if not... You're going to need something to plug it in to, to do your setup. Right. Yeah. Which is why we've brought out this. If you go to the overhead shot, this wonderful little device, uh, I have had my eye on this as long as I've had the, uh, those, uh, the, the, the micros on. This is the Blackmagic Video Assist 4K cam, uh, 4K net camera. It's, the, uh, it's a uh, video monitor. Now, the awesome thing about this is that, um, well, it works with absolutely everything. I've got it plugged into the cinema right now. Mm -hmm. uh, and as you can see, I can, I can do my settings on the cinema. Uh, and then I also get this wonderful 7-inch 1920 by 1080 touchscreen, integrated mono speaker, dual SD slots, so um, I can record here, uh, slot A, slot B, mm -hmm. both supporting SDHC, SDXC, and a plethora of inputs. As you can see, I've got uh, HDMI in, so I'm running off my cinema camera with HDMI. I've also got HDMI out, so I'm passing it through. So if you go to that shot, go to HDMI 2, Alex, you can actually see what this looks like, uh, yeah, which is, I mean, that's kind of cool. I mean, anytime yeah. you give me the ability to pass through video, it's just going to increase what I can do with the device, which, mm -hmm. which this, this is kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, getting back to this monitor, it's also got SDI. So I've got the 270 megabit, 1.5 gigabit, 3, uh, 3G and th uh, 6G right here, both in and out. So again, I can pass through if I need to. That's cool. Plus two balanced mini XLR. This is actually really, really important. Uh, the, the smaller version of this does not have these. 
which is why I didn't get it. I, I do hmm. kind of like this. This allows me to do you know real time recording of an audio source, which I need yes. if I'm going to be mixing multiple cameras and doing podcasting <laughs> and doing podcasting. <laughs> this will also do LANC, so I can sync all my cameras if I if I uh, need to get them all in the same timeline. Mm -hmm. uh, and on the back, by the way, it's powered by the same batteries that power the uh, the Blackmagic cameras, right. uh, which are they're just Canon batteries. Mm -hmm. uh, and the fact that I have two means I can swap them in and out without shutting off. Like for example, see it's still powered on. I can take these batteries out and as, uh, as I need. And you can also use it as a charger, I guess, right? I, absolutely, <laughs> it can also be used as a charger. And it is a touch screen. So it gives me all of the uh, functions that I need at a single glance, everything from what kind of rate I'm recording at to what I, you know, what I set my channels for, what I'm going to be triggering. Mm -hmm. This is a really cool way for you to monitor what you're you're recording. I mean, this this um, um, beyond anything. Yeah. This is one of the best assistants that I've seen. Now, you were also saying to me that if uh, you had a lens that was capable of it, could you control the focus and zoom and stuff yes. on that too? So if I put a micro four thirds lens on either of these cameras that support the active features, so the active mount that allows the camera to control the zoom and the, the focus, yeah. I can control it through any device that can control the cameras. That's cool. Right? I like okay, that. Getting kind of cool. The price? Yeah. A little steep. A little steep. <laughs> if you go to the link there, Alex, uh, it's gonna run you about 900 bucks. Ooh, that's pretty close to the, the price of the camera itself. Yeah, and the thing is, there is a five inch version of this mm -hmm. that does not record in 4K, that goes for $500. And doesn't have the mini XLR. Um, doesn't have the mini X XLR, XLR yeah. which kind of, uh, that's why I would go with this instead. It's, it's worth the extra $400 for the 4K recording and for the Mini XLR. Uh, speaking of that 4K recording, let's talk about the, the formats you can you can support on this. So this is gonna do NTSC and PAL. It's got, uh, of course, SDA HMI, and on both of those it'll do 720p, 50, and 59.94. Um, it'll also do 23.98 on 1080p, 24 frames per second, 25, 29.97, 30, 50, 59.94, and 60. If you wanna do interlaced, it'll do 1080i, 50, 59.94, and 60. Now. That's for both interfaces. If you're using the SDI interface, you get also the 4K resolution. So I can record 4K, 23.98 frames per second, 24, 25, 29.97, and 30 frames per second. Now, we're gonna run into the same thing that I, I had with the Micro Cinema, which mm -hmm. is it's gonna be recording in 422HQ ProRes. Okay. Which Huge, huge files. We, yeah. Remember, we used to record everything at Twit in ProRes. Right. And I remember those, those days. Big, those are big, yeah. big files. People like them, and the reason why cool. Blackmagic does it is because they are a higher-end manufacturer Especially of Especially if you're doing any post-processing. Precisely, and so it's worth it to have that. However, with this, not so much for me. Yeah. So I'm, I'm okay with dropping it down and, and using a different recorder. Mm -hmm. Just know that if you do record in ProRes on this, your files are gonna be huge. Huge, huge. <laughs> you know how we love huge files here. Absolutely. Now, uh, hold on. Let me let me do this. Uh, let me, let me, actually, let me get the menu off the screen first. There we go. And actually, if you could switch to this uh, this input. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Who's that? Oh, who's God. that handsome devil? Okay, I got the white balance all wrong again. But mm -hmm. um, I mean. Mm -hmm. What I like about this, it will give me everything from see at the bottom. I, at a glance, I know what what uh, what my FPS is. I'll know what stop I'm at. I'll know the uh, angle of my uh, my lens. I'll know my runtime. I, I I get a, a, a volume meter. I get yeah. zebra. I can use zebra on this. So I mean, all the advanced features mm. that you get built into the viewfinder of some of the higher end cameras, I can just get straight off of this monitor. How is the, the audio just off the camera? Have you listened to any recordings off of it? It's like any audio off of the camera. Yeah, I mean, so you're gonna wanna it, do... It works, yeah. but... It's like, so it's included, but you're not gonna really wanna yeah. use that. And then they know that, and yeah. that's why they have in, uh, audio in jacks, because they realize a lot of people aren't gonna use the audio at all, mm -hmm. and the people who are gonna use it will wanna actually use their own mic. Yeah, yeah. yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. This is a really, really good companion if you are thinking about getting any of these cameras. Again. Yes, a little expensive, but the information you can get off of this is, is phenomenal. Now, what I want to do right now is I want to swap this over and show you what it will do for 4K. So remember, with the, uh, the studio camera, the HDMI output is always going to be 1080. Right. The SDI output can go up to 4K. 
right. which is nice. I can do this dual output. So I can have my, my, my studio monitors at 1080, but it can be sending to my switcher in 4K. Exactly. Or vice versa, you know, whatever I want to do. I guess so. Uh, this is using the, the a slightly different style of SDI. We've seen this. Uh, they're smaller. Tiny. And, yeah, and they're kind of nice because they, they do that. Whoa. Uh, just, just realize these are a little bit delicate. Yes, um, right. there, I know people who have done stupid things like grab the camera by this or just tugged. You can pull that entire SDI socket out. Uh, you do have to like lift and pull. Oof. Uh, just just know that if you do that. Oh, that would make me so sad. It would be just really, really sad. <laughs> uh, I've actually already designed a, uh, a housing for this that goes around there so it actually provides some strain relief, strain relief because right uh, now okay. the strain relief is the connector. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I'm not, not really happy about that. But okay, we're going to go ahead and plug this into the SDI. Like so. And I'm going to turn this thing on. Let me sh remove the other camera. <coughs> oh. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Did you want My to see yourself? My video went away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me let me oh, let me get back for you. Uh, SDI. Oh, you know what? It, it helps if you put yeah. SDI out. <laughs> so, wait. Why are you upside down? I don't know. The image flipped on the oh, screen. Oh, hold on. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, I should have I should have mentioned that it it auto flips. Oh, okay. So it has orientation. Yes, That's cool. It does. Hold on. So, so lift it up. Yeah, that's... Oh. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Let me focus you in here. The color is a little bit better on yeah, this. Yeah, notice, see, and this is why I like the 4K camera. Look at the color on the 4K versus the uh, the 1080p. Well, did you have it set properly on the other one? Uh, kind of. I mean, they're set for the same color temperature. It's just, I just, I like the image off the 4K sensor a bit more. I, I know I can get this off the 1080p, but I found that the 4K is actually more forgiving for, give it, for getting you the really nice shots. Ah, that's pretty cool. This I mean, I do like looking sweet. at myself, so. Yeah, and are we, are we going, we are going through the monitor, right? Uh, oh, no, but no, that the image you're getting is a pass-through. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so, and that again, cool. this allows me to set all my parameters. I could, since I can control this via the, uh, the SDI, I can actually set my, uh, my, you know, all the parameters for what kind of format I'm going to be recording in mm -hmm. from this monitor instead of having to go through the on-camera menu, which is really, really nice. Yeah, it's uh, a pretty sharp monitor, too. Like, yeah, it's a 1080p. <laughs> it looks really clear. So it's, it's, it will scale everything to 1080p. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I mean, it's not just a monitor. I have monitors. I have a couple from uh, a few other companies, actually, we've seen on KnowHow mm -hmm. that are great for looking at the output from cameras. But this is different because this is a monitor slash recording studio yeah um that's yeah good okay. good 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 very neat okay so we've got another piece we've got the cameras we want to play with we've got a monitor that we can use to sort of control them when we need to control them right. however we promised people that this was going to be a streaming podcast studio so right. not just what we recorded and then edited and uploaded it yeah. we need a way to actually push things in real time right i wonder how we're going to do that brian i think i have an idea yeah yeah well we're going to show that idea in <laughs> just a bit